Hi, in this quick video I'm going to demonstrate how you can use Amazon S3 buckets to do a number of stuff uh, similar to maybe uploading database backups or using it as a repository for customers to dump the CSV files that uh, they would like you to upload onto your systems. Uh, the first thing you'll obviously need to do in this case is to identify exactly how much the cost would be for any amount of storage in S3. Now, uh, the good thing is that AWS has a very good pricing calculator that you can use to estimate exactly, uh, not perfectly, but to a very good extent how much it would likely cost. Uh, so if you look here, we've got the Amazon AWS uh, free usage pricing tier, and then we've got the pricing calculator here. And uh, as you can see here, the first terabyte of uh, storage space, you can see here it's about 0 0.03 per GB. Uh, there is obviously a better pricing calculator that you can use here. It's called the simple monthly calculator. If you click that, uh, you should see the pricing calculator show up on the left hand side. Uh, this again does calculations for all of the Amazon features. However, in this particular video, I'm only demonstrating Amazon S3, which you can see here. Now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and use uh, Singapore because that's closer to where I am. And let's say I need about 100 GB of free space uh, or 100 GB of uh, disk space for things that I'm going to do uh, with Amazon AWS. Uh, so as you can see here, it's saying about $2.8 a month for 100 gigabytes of storage. And if I assume that I'm going to be uploading close to about 5 GB a month and maybe even downloading 5 GB a month, then the cost of that, uh, as you can see here, doesn't really significantly affect because it's uh, fairly small. Maybe if I do 50 gigabytes, it should be a little bit of a variation. So you can see here, 50 gigabytes, we're looking at about $7. So that's basically how you want to estimate how much it's going to cost you. Now, once we've got that done, uh, we have an idea about how much it's going to cost us. The next thing is obviously to get the, uh, the account provisioned. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Amazon Web Services, and I'm going to click Sign Into Console, and then log into my Amazon account. So let me just quickly log in and then I'll uh, continue with the uh, screen after that. Yes, just give me a second. It's you just need to type in your username, password and then sign into the, uh, the account. So as you can see, we've got the S3 buckets over here. So I'll click S3. And uh, after that, you can see that the region I've selected is uh, Asia Pacific Southeast-1, which is the uh, data center in Singapore and uh, as you can see it's loading up the S3 buckets. You can see I've got quite a few here but I'm gonna go ahead and create a new one. I'm gonna call this enabledbusiness.trainings.sample. It's in Singapore. If you want to capture details about who's downloading what when they did that then you can also go ahead and set up logging but uh, this is just a demonstration so I'm just simply leaving it as it is. And then if I open up the sample, you'll see that uh, right now this uh, this is empty, but I want to go ahead and assign permissions to this. So you'll see that when I click properties over here, and when I click permissions, you'll see that right now it's just got my account here. And what I want to show you here is the bucket policies. Now before we do that, uh, I'll just upload a file just for demonstration purposes. So I'll click upload over here, and uh, I'll upload a file called expenses2015.ppt. Right, so that's up there and I click start upload and then as you can see here it uploads the file. Uh, similarly if you want to make this public so that everybody else can see it you can simply right click the file choose make public and press OK. When you do that this file now becomes public and all you need to do is if you click on this file and go to properties you'll see the URL this URL you can pretty much pass it to anybody in an email or whatever and they will be able to download the files. Now this is obviously not really what I want to do because it means that pretty much everybody can download and access the file as you can see here under permissions. But what I want to do is something a little bit more restrictive. So to do that what I'm going to do first is I'm going to use uh, an IAM or an IAM account. So this basically is identity and access management as you can see here. You'll also find it somewhere over here in this list if you're looking for it. So here it is. And what you need to do is if you're trying to restrict who has access to a bucket, say for example you create a bucket for five different clients of yours and you give them individual accounts that they can use to log in and upload files then you're expected to go ahead and provide different usernames. So in this case, as you can see, after I click IAM, I'll click Users and I'll click Create New User. And I'll just say 
sample user. This is the username that my client can use and when I click create you'll see that I've got credentials over here. So these credentials are important because what we'll do later is we'll use these credentials to automate the download and upload process. So in this case I'm going to go ahead and download these credentials. It'll be saved as a CSV file somewhere in my downloads folder. So it's called credentials.6. Great. And one thing you need to do is after this user is created, if you click on it, you'll find that this user has something called uh, Amazon resource name, which is basically how Amazon uniquely identifies this sample user among maybe all the hundreds of other sample users who uh, are uh, present. Now, For some reason, this uh, window doesn't disappear. It's a bit odd, but uh, I'll just see if I can get this AWS uh, resource name here right so as you can see I'll just need this guy over here and I'll copy this for the time being and I'll go back to my S3 account and when I come to the S3 account here's what you need to keep in mind this is where things get uh, a little bit difficult for most people uh, in this case I'm gonna go ahead and open up the sample bucket that I've uh, created and go to the properties of the sample bucket And when I come to permissions, you'll see that I've got something called add bucket policy. So when I click the add bucket policy, I need to type in a JSON script that will actually grant the permissions. So if you don't know JSON, you can see that there's this Amazon policy generator here. So you can click this guy. And you can tell that you want to give an S3 bucket policy. So that's the uh, drop down list you'll select from there. And then you got the uh, effect, which is an allow and a principle, which is basically the resource name that we just discussed. So once you've selected and copy pasted this resource name, the next thing is what kind of permissions we want to give uh, the resource. So obviously there are a minimum of two permissions that you need to give. For example, get bucket object or get object here allows people to download a specific file from the uh, Amazon bucket. And uh, you also have uh, list buckets, which is important so that Amazon or the account can basically identify uh, what objects exist inside the bucket so that it knows what objects are there and display that to you so that then you can choose which one you want to download. Now these are the permissions that you want. If you want to give blanket access to everything you can go ahead and just say all actions. So now that that's selected the next thing is to give the resource name. So if you see here the resource name is supposed to be the bucket name as you can see here. So I'll just go ahead and say enabled business and you can see this is the resource name that I have here and instead of saying Azure I'll just say uh, sample bucket which I guess is the name of the bucket now when I click add statement you'll see that this is what the bucket is about and uh, when I click generate policy you can see that this is the complete syntax for all the permissions that I've just uh, created for this particular bucket so I'm gonna copy this close this and go back to this policy editor window that we have here and paste it over here now in my case the resource name is not sample bucket it's just sample so I'm gonna go ahead and say just sample over here you can also go ahead and just leave this uh, you can actually do it like this if you have individual files that you want to grant access to you can put that in uh, square brackets as you see here and then just repeat this so I can say basically something like this where you have access at the bucket level and then you also have all objects within the bucket like this over here. The same thing applies to multiple users. You can just simply put uh, a square bracket here, a square bracket here. Oops, sorry. Right. Create a list basically and uh, then comma separate every user that you want to grant permissions to. Uh, the other thing that you want to probably do is if you go ahead and just do get followed by star and list followed by star that basically means all get permissions and all list permissions similarly if you just remove the get and just leave it at star it means all permissions so this is some of the ways that you can grant permissions to the S3 bucket uh, once you're done with this uh, you can try saving it and if the JSON syntax is good uh, you shouldn't have any problem saving it so in this case uh, I guess there is some syntax issue let me just clean this up a little uh, actually let me just get rid of this guy here and this guy here okay just a second apparently there's a oh yeah here we go so 
so uh, here's basically saying that there's an invalid resource called uh, enable business dot trainings actually dot sample you can see the name over here it's enable business dot trainings dot sample and that's exactly what you need to pass here as well uh, action does not apply to any resource in the statement list bucket so that's basically because uh, there is nothing available at the moment so let me just clean this out so in this case some of these permissions don't apply at the moment because there's really nothing inside the bucket so uh, when you click save it'll just basically list so you can see your multi-part uploads this also doesn't apply to this particular bucket at the moment so uh, you don't need to specially grant it basically so with this we've created our bucket and uh, the bucket policy so the next step is how do people access the bucket and the contents of the bucket so for this what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and open up uh, command prompt yeah now when I type in command prompt and plus AWS configure you'll see that basically I get the syntax where it'll ask me for access key etc etc now if you want AWS command line libraries to be installed you need to come into Amazon CLI download and uh, when you google that you'll get the Amazon command line interface and you can see here it's got installing AWS command line uh, all you need to do basically is just download the setup files so in this case uh, it's here you can see you've got download and run 64-bit installer so download install it you'll need to restart your system after you download it and once that's done essentially you can access Amazon resources through the command prompt so in this case I'm gonna say AWS hyphen configure and once I've done that it'll ask me for the user key and the secret key and this is the stuff that we downloaded earlier when we created the user so if you see here I've got the user key here and then I've got the secret key here don't worry I'm gonna go, go ahead and delete this so it's not going to be useful for anybody else after this demonstration uh, I'll go ahead and paste this in and the next one is the uh, the secret key so I'll just copy this come back over here paste this over here and then it's asking me for the default region in my case the default region is AP Southeast hyphen one which is basically Asia Pac Asia Pacific Southeast hyphen one uh, I'd like the output in text format so that it's easier for me to work with and now that I've done that you'll see that I've come back to the command prompt and then what you need to do is you need to say AWS S3 because that's the resource that we're trying to access yeah and uh, before we actually do that let me just choose a smaller folder something that's got like very few files in them so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and open up or create a new folder on my desktop uh, or my uh, C drive it's gonna be called sample and uh, what I'll do is I'll just come here and say CD dot CD dot dot CD sample and inside the sample I'm gonna create a new file so I'm just gonna call this dummy file so you can see here that uh, I've got this dummy file created here so the next step basically is to just go Amazon AWS S3 and sync the files from C colon sample into my S3 bucket so that's basically going to be S3 forward slash forward slash enabled business dot trainings dot sample which is the name of the bucket that I was referring to and because I need to just dump the files into the same folder I'm just gonna go ahead and choose a, a full stop there so that it knows that it's supposed to synchronize with the local file when I press enter it's now going to go ahead compare what's there in the Amazon S3 bucket as well as the uh, folder sample over here and uh, now when I open it up you'll see that I've got expenses 2015.pptx downloaded from Amazon as well as my dummy file which if you come back into AWS and refresh it you'll see that that file will actually now be available inside the bucket oh actually that file wouldn't be inside the bucket because I've not granted permissions to upload I've only granted permissions to download you'll see that I've just given get and not put so for that reason nothing gets uploaded it just gets downloaded but if you want to upload you can simply just come over here and again just uh, put something like this well, I'll say put and I'll save it and once that's done if I try rerunning the command what you'll see this time is that it doesn't actually read download or upload any of the files 
because uh, there's no need for that it identifies which files it has already downloaded or uploaded and then uh, performs the operation based on that so that's all there is really to uh, working with Amazon AWS S3 and uh, it's as you can see very easy to go ahead and work with uh, S3 because it gives you a lot of flexibility in terms of automating how your database backups or how your files get uploaded and downloaded etc and uh, I've been using it for quite some time now for uh, a lot of stuff that I do within my office and recently I've also migrated all of my uh, training content and things like that to S3 so that uh, customers around the world can actually access the data much faster compared to my traditional FTP that I used to host previously well uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video I hope it explains uh, a lot of things that probably uh, people wondered about S3 and how to use it and uh, thank you for watching I hope you've enjoyed this